I've recently installed another drive into my NAS storage unit. So now I have all four compartments full up. I have three 10 terabytes and one 12 terabytes. And it has a failure rate of one. So if one drive fails, hopefully I shouldn't lose any information. But if two or more fail, then I will. But as it only holds four drives, it makes sense, or well in my opinion anyway, to have it set up so it's backed up by one failure. Hopefully it never happens, but you never know. So what I'm going to do is I will stick a link in the video description and at the end of me shucking that drive, the 12 terabyte. And as far as I know, it's what's called a red. It's got white label on it, but it's a red drive, as far as I know. I've checked it. It says it is, it's an EMFZ drive, which, as far as I understand, is a white labelled red. So that's all done, and it's just finished doing its update. It took just over two days to do. So, yeah, it takes quite a bit of time to populate it and sort it all out. But that's all done. So what we're going to do now in this video, we're doing another upgrade. I'm just going to quickly show you what's on there at the moment. I'm going to quickly go through the drive zone, showing you all four drives, as you can see. And I have a cache, but I only have one M.2 in now, and I've bought another one. It should be in here to go in there, so it should have two. Probably overkill for what I paid for this. Probably don't need that much power, but hopefully it will help, especially on my video editing. It should help make things run a lot more smoother and faster. That is the plan behind it. And also, the reason I put another drive in is because it was getting full up. It was 80% full, and I thought, oh, you know, we're going to have to start thinking about upgrading. So that's why I went for a 12 terabyte. The bigger drives, 14 and upwards, there was just far too much money at the moment. But something to bear in mind for the future, perhaps. But at the moment, for me, they're just too expensive. And also the drive and this, I bought on Black Friday. So I did save a little bit of money. Well, hopefully quite a bit, actually. So, yes, yeah, like I said, so it's all populated. It's all ready to go. And all I've got to do now is shut the thing down. And, uh, yeah, hopefully, hopefully install that. And hopefully it runs faster. So it's 50% full now, which is, you know, good or 56% full actually, so it's just over halfway. Now I do have a lot of storage, or I do have a lot of videos on there, which, you know, realistically I could just delete them, but I'm not going to, anyway. So with that, what we're going to do is, like I said, shut the drive down, or the NAS storage. So I'm going to shut that down first, which is quite easy to do, to, to click on shut there. It does take about a minute or two, it has to shut down very carefully, unplug it all and then put it on the desk and uh, install that. So while that's shutting down, I'm going to open this little baby up. I will stick a link in the uh, video description for the uh, storage and also for the actual drive or the NAS storage unit itself. So this is it. So this is the 970 EVO Plus NVMe M.2. And at the time of buying, it was about eighty odd pounds, so not cheap. But I wanted it, and it's going in there. As soon as I get it out, as soon as that thing shuts down, still going at the moment. Like I said, it does take a little bit of time. You can actually buy these second hand, but I went for a brand new one. I didn't want a second hand one. And the thing, the other thing about the second hand ones, and this is on Amazon, by the way. They yeah, have been checked out to make sure they're safe. It takes actually longer for them to turn up. So I thought, well, I'm not doing that. So yeah, there it is. That is it. Probably some documentation in the back somewhere. Maybe, or under there. I don't know. Is there? Is there? Yeah, there is. Look. Not that I'm going to bother reading it anyway. I just want to make sure it works. So that is it. This little tiny baby here is it. So that's the second one. It's very easy to put it in. My NAS storage, by the way. So let's see if she's shut down yet. And she has. We're going to unplug it and stick it up here. Make a bit of space. So as 
one plug, one power socket plugged into it, plus two network cables at any one time. So like I said, it's all populated now, so that was the last one I had to populate, and yeah, that is all done. Now we're going to do an upgrade. Like I said, it is quite easy to do. Just turn it upside down. So that is the one we're going to populate. I'm just going to show you the other one. So we have a 960 Evo in there. This is a 970. So yeah, should be quite easy. So basically you just push that in there. Would help if I had it the right way round. Been meaning to do this for some time now. Ah, there you go. Don't know what I'm doing. Push that down. And that is it. <laughs> it is that easy to do. Put this back on. So now I can't get that on. That's because it's round the wrong way, your key. No, it ain't. It's round the right way for that one. Round the wrong way for that one. Do, do, do. That is how easy it is. Obviously, you're going to have to go in and do some setting adjustments. That shouldn't be too difficult. Try not to bounce these about because they do affect the actual storage. So I'm always you know, trying to be a bit careful. So I'm going to pick this back. That will take a couple of minutes for it to sort itself out. So with that, I'm going to pause the video while it sorts itself out and uh, then log back in. Right, so it's done a restart and what I've done, I've uninstalled the SSD because the way I understand it, because I had one SSD doing all the work, you have to uninstall that and then set it up with two SSDs. So I've uninstalled the single one hasn't caused no issues, it shouldn't cause any issues anyway, providing you're not transferring data to and fro it, you know, you stopped all your work that you're doing and then uninstall it. As long as you do that first, you should be fine. So I've uninstalled it. As you can see, there's my four main drives. They're all my storage drives and then I have two cache drives. They are different sizes or different speeds. I have a 960 and a 970. It shouldn't make no difference. Like I said, it will only perform to the slowest SSD drive. And according to this, they're roughly about the same speed anyway. So it shouldn't be an issue. But it will come up and probably warn me that what I'm doing, you know, do I want to go ahead and basically think like that. So what we're going to do now, we're going to set it all up. It shouldn't take a few seconds. Or it should take a couple of minutes. It shouldn't say a few seconds. It's going to take a few minutes. So it says... There is no SSD cache in your system, so we'll go to a create and we're going to do read write cache. I'm not going to go through the pros and cons of why you're going to do like that, but we'll be reading to it and writing from it, you know, or reading from it and writing to it, I should say. So basically, that's what we're going to be doing. So we'll go next. And what ones do we want to mount? Well, we want to mount both of them, so you just tick the boxes, quite simple, really. And uh, go next. Using different SSDs, what I was saying earlier, modules to create an SSD cache may affect the performance. Like I said, it will only go to the slowest speed, but they're fast anyway, so it should be a bonus. I will probably get uh, two the same one day, maybe, I don't know. So create, it will take, a, you know, quite a, I'll say quite a while, probably longest it will take will probably be less than 10 minutes. So RAID 1. I'll let you know roughly how long it takes. So like I said, RAID 1 we're going to go for and... Right, we want MAX, so just double click on that to make sure it's on MAX, which it is. And click Apply. And then it will warn you about what it's going to be doing. And You know, you should read this bit. Automatically protect mechanics and blah, blah, blah. I understand the risks and all that stuff. I understand that the data on the SSDs will be removed. You're basically doing a format. And click OK. And away she goes. Like I can see it will take a few minutes. I'm not sure exactly how long it will take, but it will take a few minutes. And uh, like I said, we'll give you a rough idea how long it's going to take. I'll have cup tea while I'm waiting. 
Right, so it's all done. It took about four minutes. I wasn't sure exactly how long it took because I got interrupted. So I had to go and answer the door. But it was about four minutes, so it didn't take too long. And as you can see, it says healthy up there. And if you click on here, it shows you that they're all done. So there's the two SSD drives. And it will run at the slowest speed. As far as I understand, that's how it works. And that makes perfect sense to me. So that is it all done. Let's just go through some of the bits. So here's your four drives. They're my main four drives. And here's the two cache ones. See? All working perfectly. So it's all saying it's healthy. It keeps an eye on everything for you as well. So like I said earlier, I will stick a link in for shucking in the video description of a video I've made. And also, I will stick a link at the end of this video in case you know, you're interested in looking at that. Also, I will stick links in the video description for the SSD drive in case you want to buy one. And also for the Synology disk station in case you want to buy one of them. They're not cheap. They cost a hell of a lot of money. But if you have a lot of videos and you want somewhere to keep them safe, they're well worth it. They're well worth the investment. Like I said, they're not cheap. And just for the actual case itself with the hardware built in, they are quite expensive. And then you've got to add your storage, your hard drives. So it costs probably a few thousand pounds at the end of the day. But for me, they're perfect. I'm going to quickly show you how fast they are by having two SSDs in there. It did run pretty fast, but for me, I've noticed a big difference. This is my Synology storage. There's two ways you can get to it. You can either go through a folder if you're doing it locally, which I'm doing it at the moment, or you can go through a browser. So if you're somewhere else in the world and you, know, you need to access it, you just put in your password and stuff like that and you get to it like that. But because we're doing it locally, I'm just using my folders to get to it. So this is my setup, this is my storage, and these are ones I've already made. And they load extremely quick. You know, they're, they're like instant, it's like they're on my C drive, literally. That's how quick they are. But they're not on my C drive. See, there's quite a lot of bits and bobs going on there, as you can see. Because I make quite a few videos on whatever product I'm doing. And obviously I cut quite a bit, because I'm an amateur. But it works extremely well, and it is extremely fast. So it's well worth putting that other SSD in there. I'm very pleased with it. So with that, if you found this video helpful and informative, please subscribe. It doesn't cost you any money. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. And if you didn't, give me a thumbs down. And uh, thank you very much for watching. So easy, once you know how.